All right. Thank you very much, Nicole. Certainly appreciate that. 16 minutes past the hour. Thank you very much for being with us. It's Morning Drive live here on Golf Channel. You see Suzanne Pedersen in the photo, and now you see her in studio with us. First time in the studio. Well, right now, she lives in Florida, right around the corner. So as Gary likes to say, we'll call it a home game. Bring you on in and say hello. Thank you very much for being aboard. Good morning. All right, you've had a couple weeks off. How are you keeping the edge? How are you keeping that competitive edge? Play a major championship, a lot of momentum, and then it's decompress. How are you keeping your edge? Well, sometimes it's actually nice to decompress after a big week. Um, to have three weeks is maybe a little bit more than what you would like, but uh, I've had my brother in town, so I've been trying to beat him up as much as I can. So <laughs> that would always keep the competitive We're talking like edge wrestling going. or actually golf there? <laughs> golf. Oh, okay, fine. Oh, always. See a good player? Yeah, he can give me a good little test, but uh, I usually win. I usually win. Uh, now, let's talk about the last time in the major that you guys were out of the Kraft Nabisco Championship. Uh, this is an event that you have been close in recent memory. When somebody says Kraft Nabisco, what comes to mind for you? Well, Kraft Nabisco is one of my favorite uh, championships. Um, it's a fantastic golf course. It's, uh, I've been close a few times. It's just one of those courses It really suits my eye. Uh, it feels like I can play around and know how to play it. Obviously, now it's nice when you come back to a course that you know. You know how to play, you know what's, what it's expecting of you, and you can prepare your game. Um, this year, I didn't really play my best, but it's always a great venue. It's, they really take good care of us, and uh, wow, what a great winner we had this year. You know, Stacy Lewis is going to join us in studio tomorrow, and not only did she win, she stared down the number one player in the world. When you won your major championship, if you could give Stacy one little piece of advice about how much life changes, and most of it, I'm sure, is good, what would it be? I mean, I don't think it changes at all. I mean, really? For me, when I won my major, uh, you're just trying to win tournaments. For me, it just happened to be a major as well, which is maybe a bonus at the time. Now I'm trying to win the majors. Now I feel like I won my fair share, and I should be able to be in contention when it comes down to Sundays in every major. So it's a little different that way, but I think that also comes with being on tour, um, experience. Um, years gone by, you get a little bit older, you feel like your game is getting sharper. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's a fantastic feel when you kind of close that last putt and uh, you just got to enjoy that ride. Speaking of the majors, when you're looking at the leaderboard and you're eyeing it, who's the one name that you think that most women on the LPGA Tour would be intimidated by if they were in contention in a major right now? Well, I can tell you it was Annika Sorenstam when she was at her best. Uh, she every... sits in that chair every Thursday. I know. I'm pretty proud. Hopefully yeah. I can bring some magic to the course <laughs> next time. No, I mean, she was, uh, she was one that, even if she wasn't on the board, you were, you were always looking for her name. Um, now there's the depth of women's golf is fantastic. It's anybody can shoot low, and uh, I don't know. I don't think it's, there's any scary names that frightens me, but uh, uh, Annika was uh, intimidating. Do you watch boards earlier in majors than you do in other events? Not really. Uh, you should get a feel for the course. Uh, you know what kind of numbers you would have to shoot. Um, this year it was uh, exciting to watch because it was kind of a two-man race, but uh, or two two women race, I would say maybe. But uh, it was very very interesting to see how Stacy kind of kept her kind of emotions and took it all the way down to the 18th, and uh, I'm sure Yanni was disappointed, but it was another solid performance from her. Now, you live in the United States now, but grew up in Norway. All I really know about Norway is what they tell me at Disney when I go through the country. <laughs> at Epcot, you go to the <laughs> ride, it's great, they show you the movie, I love it. You go walk through the store, you get all that stuff. It, it, you know, we just talked to Dustin Johnson. I said, if I send Gary to you for the night, where are you going to take him? He said, we're going to go to the bagel place, and we're going to golf, and we're going to take him to this place for dinner, and we're going to go there. If I send Gary to Norway with you for the weekend, yes, yeah, you are becoming, you are essentially Lauren Thompson running, the, 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 you're out there doing all that stuff. Gary goes Norway. You guys are going to hang out. Give me sort of the typical day, and, and give us a feel for, for that culture. In which well, you... the first thing I would have to say, you'd have to bring some cash because it's expensive. Hmm. A beer is like... I don't know, 12 bucks? It's, it's insane. It's like it's being at really Yankee Stadium. It's <laughs> really expensive. It's true. But you would have to go in the summertime. It's, um, we don't really have beaches, uh, but our coastline is fantastic in the summertime. And um, it's a very, uh, I think it's a lot of um, activity in Norway. It's like, it's a lot of sport. We have a great nature. We have the fjords up north. 
it's um, it's fantastic. Well, you love to ski. When you go skiing in the European community, where do you go? Usually, I go at home. If I have a week off and I can stay at home, I'll stay at home and I'll ski right outside our uh, doorstep. It's uh, I can put on my cross country skis and. Uh, be gone for well, the Norwegians 10 hours. dominate cross country. So you like to cross country more than you like to do alpine skiing? Growing up, I hated cross country skiing. It was like every time we went out for a trip, I was like, when is the next downhill? When is the next mm -hmm. downhill? I mean, you hated those uphill rides, but uh, now I enjoy both. I really enjoy what both. Are you, what, are you, what are your agents and sponsors feel about <laughs> you going downhill skiing in your free time? I don't really do it that much anymore. And don't tell anybody. That will, I'll, I'll keep it safe. <laughs> All right. You're going to stay put. We'll talk about the Solheim Cup and what our expectations are for that. We'll do that. She stays put. And then also ahead, how about the back nine? What did the European golfers do this week as a group that the American golfers would never do? We have the answer there. And then straight ahead, we also have the best of coming up for the end of the show. You know what that is. It's the best moments from the show. It makes you smile. It makes you laugh. It makes you think. And we'll do that as well. He's Gary Williams. I'm Eric Casilli. It's 22 minutes past the hour. It's Morning Drive Live right here at Golf Channel. Back in 25 minutes past the hour, it's Morning Drive Live here on Golf Channel with Gary Williams. I'm Eric Casillas. Thank you very much for being aboard. You see the LPGA flag autographed in our studio, and Suzanne Pedersen, part of that great tradition, she is here with us. We're looking forward to having you. We were excited, first time visiting in here. Uh, we know you live locally. You play over at Bay Hill, and uh, we say thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. All right, you uh, are kind of like big sister to Matteo Manassero, you, and, and we sit here in wonderment at what this kid is doing. He'll be 18 tomorrow. What can you tell us about him that you go, wow, really? Well, we actually happened to meet him when we did the Olympic bid back in Copenhagen a couple of years ago. Uh, and he was just this little six, well, it was 15 maybe at the time, uh, 16. Uh, he was this shy little Italian kid who was just working on his English, uh, plugging along. Super nice guy, and uh, Michelle and myself, we kind of felt like big sisters. We took care of him for three days, and uh, it's very impressive what he's done. I mean, he's turning 18 this week, and to have two wins, and I think he jumped up to 36 in the world. Yes, yeah, uh, like It's very, very impressive. Uh, a very nice guy, and uh, he's cute too. Oh, <laughs> a now we, Italian we, guy. we, we, we <laughs> at, were asked what we wanted for our 18th birthday because he's going to be 18 in two days. What did you want for your 18th birthday? Where uh, were you? It was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> 18th birthday. Probably wanted a car. Like that's, every other guy. That's all three of us. He of said course. car. I said car, and it's but like I didn't game. get it. He didn't get one either. No, I did I not. I got a moped. Really? Yeah. That's not cool. It worked, though. It worked. <laughs> they they got me around town. Like moped. Uh, yeah, they're not cool. Let, <laughs> it's let me not a okay. Vespa. Can I explain things to both? Mopeds are not cool. <laughs> they're functional. They are not cool. In 1981, they were cool, man. As far as you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Solheim Cup year. Uh, talk to me about what that means to you and what's getting, what are you getting ready for? Well, I mean, Solheim is... Uh, what would we have done without the Solheim? I think I have all my best memories in golf from the Solheim. Uh, you get to know your friends, uh, your playing partners, you create memories for life. So I have had so many on-course experiences with Annika, uh, kind of being together with her on the course, on the same team, and kind of being in her head. It was fantastic. It was a fantastic learning experience. and. Like I said, it's, uh, it brings the best out of everybody, and it's a week that is very special, and uh, this will be my fifth or sixth. You've already I been think. on five. Yeah, this will be my sixth this year, so I still will be a junior to Laura Davis, but I'm probably a senior on the team, so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. The, the best part about it for me, Ryder Cup, Solheim Cup, is that all of the players walk up to the line in terms of intensity, but rarely, if ever, do you see it cross it. Do you f sense yourself that you're getting a little chippy? That word you know, in, in America means you're getting a little edgy with your opponent. Have you ever gotten to the point where you went, I'm getting a little edgy here? You know what? The intensity is so, so high, and uh, I just think the fair play and the true sportsmanship is the best way to go, no matter who you play and how you play. Um, it's, uh, but I mean, obviously, I have a lot of American friends. I play, you, you're going to play against, against great friends. I mean, I played against Chris Secure a million times, and you know you're going to play her because, I mean, it's only 12 men on the team, but 
May the best player win. It's not all friends, though. Dottie oh, Pepper, yeah. were you there for, have you heard about, were you there, and what do you know about the Dottie Pepper incident where they had the punching bag with her name on it? Because Annika has spilled the beans and said it happened. I know, it's, but I mean, that's what the intensity does. I mean, you're so nervous. I mean, you hardly get the ball on the tee on the first, like, just actually sit on the tee on the first hole. And, uh, Are you more nervous before a major or before the Solheim Cup? Oh, Solheim by far. It's, it's just, you're playing for 11 teammates, and it's not just yourself. You, you, can, you can win for the team or you can lose for the team, and it feels, I mean, it's great when you win, but it feels awful when you don't get your point on that, on that board. It's not only team, nation, too. I mean, you're representing your nation. I can't imagine the pride you certainly have for Norway. All right, best athlete. We just had Dustin Johnson on last hour. He's one of the best athletes in golf. Who's the best athlete on the LPGA Tour? You love tennis, you ski. Who's the best athlete? Wow, that's a tough question. I would probably put myself in the top five, I would say. <laughs> I, I just love sports. Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm playing myself. I pre pretty much watch whatever's going on in the sports world, around the world. And um, it's, um, I, if I wouldn't have played golf, I probably would have done something else in sport, maybe skis. So. Uh, maybe myself. I don't know if we that's may, a good we thing may have or had bad the thing best to mention athlete myself. on the PGA Tour and the best athlete on the LPGA same Tour. Same day. On the same day on this program. All right, I know you're on Twitter. How can we follow you? So Sam Pedersen. Okay. My full name. He's at Gary Williams GC. You want to make you sure go. you follow him. I'm <laughs> at Fantasy EK. So, and you can follow Morning Drive as well. Anyone can follow our show. So that's how you get in touch with all the people that we bring in. We make sure that we do that for you. It's great to have you in. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Suzanne Pedersen, obviously winner 2007 LPGA Championship.